A chalice from Latin calyx, bug, borrowed from Greek kylix kulix, cup, or goblet is a footed cup intended to hold a drink. In religious practice, a chalice is often used for drinking during a ceremony or may carry a certain symbolic meaning. Topic. Religious use Topic. Topic. Christian The ancient Roman calyx was a drinking vessel consisting of a bowl fixed atop a stand, and was in common use at banquets. In Roman Catholicism, Eastern Orthodox Church, Oriental Orthodoxy, Anglicanism, Lutheranism and some other Christian denominations, a chalice is a standing cup used to hold sacramental wine during the Eucharist also called the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion. Chalices are often made of precious metal, and they are sometimes richly enameled and jeweled. The gold goblet was symbolic for family and tradition. Chalices have been used since the early church. Because of Jesus' command to his disciples to do this in remembrance of me, Luke chapter 22 verse 19, and Paul's account of the Eucharistic rite in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 24-25, the celebration of the Eucharist became central to Christian liturgy. Naturally, the vessels used in this important act of worship were highly decorated and treated with great respect. A number of early examples of chalices have a large bowl and two handles. Over time, the size of the bowl diminished and the base became larger for better stability. Over time, official church regulations dictated the construction, blessing, and treatment of chalices. Some religious traditions still require that the chalice, at least on the inside of the cup, to be gold plated. In Western Christianity, chalices will often have a pommel or node where the stem meets the cup to make the elevation easier. In Roman Catholicism, chalices tend to be tulip shaped, and the cups are quite narrow. Roman Catholic priests will often receive chalices from members of their families when first ordained. In Eastern Christianity Oriental Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox and Eastern Catholic churches, chalices will often have icons enameled or engraved on them, as well as a cross. In Orthodoxy and Eastern Catholicism, all communicants receive both the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. To accomplish this, a portion of the lamb host is placed in the chalice, and then the faithful receive communion on a spoon. For this reason, Eastern chalices tend to have larger, rounded cups. In the Russian Orthodox Church, the faithful will often kiss the foot base of the chalice after receiving Holy Communion. In other traditions, they will kiss the cup. Although Orthodox monks are not permitted to hold personal possessions, the canons permit a hieromonk i.e., a monk who has been ordained to the priesthood to keep a chalice and other vessels necessary to celebrate the divine liturgy. In the early and medieval church, when a deacon was ordained, he would be handed a chalice during the service as a sign of his ministry. Early written accounts of the ordination of deaconesses also reflect this practice. In the West the deacon carries the chalice to the altar at the offertory, in the East, the priest carries the chalice and the deacon carries the paten discos. Only wine, water and a portion of the host are permitted to be placed in the chalice, and it may not be used for any profane purpose. The chalice is considered to be one of the most sacred vessels in Christian liturgical worship, and it is often blessed before use. In the Roman Catholic Church, and some Anglo-Catholic churches, it was the custom for a chalice to be consecrated by being anointed with chrism, and this consecration could only be performed by a bishop or abbot only for use within his own monastery. Among the Eastern churches there are varying practices regarding blessing. In some traditions the very act of celebrating the sacred mysteries sacrament is the only blessing necessary, in others, there is a special rite of blessing. In some Eastern traditions this blessing may be done only by a bishop, in some it may be done by a priest. In any case, in both the East and the West, once a chalice has been blessed, it may only be touched by an ordained member of the higher clergy bishop, priest or deacon. In the Russian Orthodox Church a subdeacon is permitted to touch the holy vessels, but only if they are wrapped in cloth. The Holy Chalice in Christian tradition the Holy Chalice is the vessel which Jesus used at the Last Supper to serve the wine. New Testament texts make no mention of the cup except within the context of the Last Supper and give no significance whatsoever to the object itself. Herbert Thurston in the Catholic Encyclopedia 1908 concluded that, 
No reliable tradition has been preserved to us regarding the vessel used by Christ at the Last Supper. In the 6th and 7th centuries pilgrims to Jerusalem were led to believe that the actual chalice was still venerated in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, having within it the sponge which was presented to our Saviour on Calvary." Several surviving standing cups of precious materials are identified in local traditions as the chalice. <laughs> Holy Grail an entirely different and pervasive tradition concerns the cup of the Last Supper. In this highly muddled though better known version, the vessel is known as the Holy Grail. In this legend, Jesus used the cup at the Last Supper to institute the Mass. Other stories claim that Joseph of Arimathea used the cup to collect and store the blood of Christ at the crucifixion. Topic. Unitarian Universalism At the opening of Unitarian Universalist worship services, many congregations light a flame inside a chalice. A flaming chalice is the most widely used symbol of Unitarianism and Unitarian Universalism and the official logo of the Unitarian Universalist Association and other Unitarian and UU churches and societies. The design was originated by the artist Hans Deutsch, who took his inspiration from the chalices of oil burned on ancient Greek and Roman altars. It became an underground symbol in occupied Europe during World War II for assistance to help Unitarians, Jews, and other people escape Nazi persecution. The chalice is often shown surrounded by two linked rings. The two linked rings were used as an early symbol for the Unitarian Universalist Association, signifying the joining of Unitarianism and Universalism. There is no standardized interpretation of the flaming chalice symbol. In one interpretation, the chalice is a symbol of religious freedom from the impositions of doctrine by a hierarchy and openness to participation by all. The flame is interpreted as a memorial to those throughout history who sacrificed their lives for the cause of religious liberty. In another interpretation, the flaming chalice resembles a cross, symbolic of the Christian roots of Unitarian Universalism. Topic. Wicca In Wicca, a chalice, as a feminine principle, is often used in combination with the athame ceremonial black-handled knife, as male principle. Combining the two evokes the act of procreation, as a symbol of universal creativity. This is a symbol of the great rite in Wiccan rituals. A chalice is also used in the small rite. Neo-paganism Some forms of neo-paganism make use of chalices in their rituals as well. A chalice may be placed on an altar or on the ground. The chalice may contain wine, whiskey, water, or other liquids. It is used to represent the genitalia of the goddess or female deity. Rastafarian. Topic. Rastafaris engage in an activity called reasoning. This reasoning helps them shape attitudes towards politics, theology, repatriation, and reparation. Participants discuss personal issues, but the focus is on the interaction of individuals and society, as well as issues such as ecology. Such sessions include supervised use of ganja intended to put participants in touch with peaceful feelings, unity, and consciousness. Rasta philosophy describes ganja conscious humans as the temple of God, within which God dwells. Using ganja is said to stimulate this inner being through spiritual discourse. In these sessions, ganja is smoked in joints or in a chalice, water pipe or bong, although Rasta witnesses said chalice smokers had to be very mature and clean-spirited due to the powerful hits delivered by this unique and potent form of inhalation device. Topic. Poison chalice Topic. The term, poison chalice, is applied to a thing or situation which appears to be good when it is received or experienced by someone, but then becomes or is found to be bad. The idea was referred to by Benedict of Nursia in one of his exorcisms, found on the Saint Benedict medal, Vade Retro Satana. Nunquam suede mihi vana. Sunt mala quae libas. Ipse venina bibas, begone Satan. 
Never tempt me with your vanities. What you offer me is evil. Drink the poison yourself. William Shakespeare uses the expression in Act 1, Scene 7 of Macbeth. It occurs in the opening soliloquy of the scene when Macbeth is considering the ramifications of the murder he is plotting. It is also a term to describe coaching a sports team with a history of winning championships. One feels lucky to manage such a club but then ends up under pressure to win a championship, get a great result within the first year, or they Refired, for example, teams like Real Madrid, Chelsea and Barcelona or Moyes at Manchester United, where managers have to win a tournament, a league trophy, qualify for Europe, or they're fired within their first year or any year they win nothing. Topic. Heraldry Topic. The use of chalices as heraldic devices is not unusual, especially in ecclesiastical heraldry. A number of cities and regions also make use of the chalice. For instance, the coat of arms of the municipality of Fanas in the district of Pratigo, Davos in the Swiss canton of Graubünden bears a gold chalice on a solid blue background. The coat of arms of Staufen im Breisgau contains the three golden chalices i.e. Dry Staufen in ancient German of the lords of Staufen de, advocates of the monastery of St. Trudbert. Gallery. Topic. Topic. Other usage. Topic. Topic. Quebec. Topic. In French Canadian culture, particularly in and around Quebec, the use of the names of holy objects such as callus. A variation of callus, which is the French word for chalice, can be an alternate form of cursing. Somewhat equivalent to the American word, goddamn, or the phrase, god damn it. The use of callus, or tabarnak, a variation of tabernacle, as an interjection is not uncommon in Quebec. For example, callus, I forgot to lock the front door, or muttering, tabarnak, under your breath after you get a flat tire. Presumably a derivation of taking the Lord's name in vain. Topic. Czech Republic Topic. With reference on Hussite movement in the Kingdom of Bohemia, besides religious use chalice also became one of the unofficial national symbols of the Czechs. It is frequently used in Czech national symbolism and it is part of many historical banners. Topic. See also Topic. Ablution in Christianity Artag Chalice Ciborium Communion under both kinds Corporal Liturgy Darinaflan Chalice Holy Grail Intinction Patton Tassilo Chalice The Oxburg Chalice The Silver Chalice Treasure of Gordon Topic. Notes Topic. Topic. External links Topic. The Dictionary Definition of Chalice at Wiktionary Media Related to Chalices at Wikimedia Commons Chalice Article from the Catholic Encyclopedia Stem glass classification Wine goblets information website Material culture of the mendicant orders in Ireland, a selection of photographs of and detailed information about religious artifacts, mainly chalices, belonging to the Irish Franciscans. A UCD digital library collection.